Star Wars geek girls, they're geek girls that like Star Wars, and sometimes cry. Hello, uh, I'm Zoe, and this is Star Wars Geek Girl. I'm here with me, Lizzie. <laughs> uh, it's been a while. It's been uh, a hot minute, as the kids say. Yeah, um, it's, it's been crazy. You're busy. I'm bu- well. I was busy. I'm not really too busy anymore. You're an um, MP. I account. am. We switched. We switched coasts officially now. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm in living it up in Los Angeles. I've been to the El Cap twice already. Uh, both times for Rogue One, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went to see Raiders of the Lost Ark at the Chinese Theater, and it was really cool. And I went to museums, and what else have I done? I hung out with your family. Mm-hmm. I haven't since, actually. I came up here, but I have to give your mom her birthday present, so I will at some point. <laughs> Great. I went to Scum and Villainy. I've been hanging out with Mangalar Clan of mm-hmm. Mandalorian Mercs, and like, seriously coolest people ever shout out to them because I literally just like I literally moved in my apartment and I just went on the Mercs forum so I was bored and I was like oh the local clan is having an armor party this Sunday sure and I just like basically showed up and they were super cool they gave me a coin and like oh my god you should come see Rogue One with us and it was like I don't know it's very welcoming I like it very mm-hmm. much it's so great <laughs> and they were like giving me vegan restaurant recommendations uh it's pretty awesome shout out to mangalar you guys rock no, that was awesome. <laughs> i mean at um, least you're enjoying it up there. yeah it's a party i turned tw- well, i turned 21 in what's today the ninth. i turned 21 in 10 days mm-hmm. and it's really gonna be a party <laughs> um, party 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 yay i'm excited um we also have a lot of star wars things to talk about and be excited about uh a few just a few things that we missed over the summer uh star wars really takes like a vacation in the summer so they don't Mm -hmm. do as much which is great because that's when i was very busy when you were very busy so it works out a little bit um yeah you ready so Yes, we watched the Lego Star Wars Summer Vacation up, uh, movie? Yeah, movie? Special? It was something, it was good. It was a, mm-hmm. it was a movie, it was good, it was cute. Um, it you kind of kind of followed good. Finn around, try, Finn trying really hard yeah. to relax. And it was really nice, because it was like, the holiday special was Ray, and the Halloween one was Poe, and I was like, well, like, now we need a Finn one, but I was like, what holiday are we going to do for Finn? Like, a Valentine's Day? Like, what? <laughs> like, and uh, the summer vacation, I didn't even think of that, because it's not like, oh, it's a holiday. You know, it's just like a thing. Um, but I really liked it. I'm glad Finn got his special. Um, it was really good. It was very appropriately timed for me because it came out like the week before I left to LA and the whole theme was like like see I'm gonna cry talking about it now like <laughs> legit and the whole theme was like oh they're at the end of their adventure and they have to go their separate ways and accept that and I'm like about to graduate college leaving all my friends and family behind on the opposite coast and I'm like this is not this is not the time star I, like bawled my eyes I'm like crying right now legit Oh, it's the really original good. Star Wars Geek Girl. <laughs> Throwback. Yeah. <laughs> um, Throwback. It was intense. Friday. <laughs> yeah. No, you can ask my dad. I was like bawling after that. <laughs> oh, little baby. Ow. Ow? What? You call me a baby. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> well, what do what do babies do? <laughs> Rude. Um, <laughs> on the other hand, though, Weird Al's in it, and that's really funny and great. Um, 
We <laughs> love Weird Al in this house. Yeah, well. Yes. I do. I do. Um, okay, well, yeah, your house. And the house. other house. <laughs> um, ding. Okay. Um, yeah, it was cute. It was like, it was sort of like, more like the Halloween one, where it was like, different stories because it was like Finn was sad because he like arranged his whole vacation and then everyone else just like goes off and like does different things and then Finn's all by himself and he's really sad and um and like different like Jedi force ghosts appear and like give him advice um so we have Obi-Wan and then Anakin and then Leia I think were the three and so Obi-Wan was my favorite Mm -hmm. I thought that was funny it was great. It was um, it was everyone on Tatooine, obviously, and the um, the one the one like rebel commander from like the Freemaker Adventures and stuff. She's like trying to steal some stuff from Jabba, and so shut up. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> and so she uh, um, is, they like run into each other, and he helps her, and it's like. I honestly, my main memory is just Obi Wan singing. That was like <laughs> the best thing ever. <laughs> I just liked seeing him actually relax. I know Obi Wan was like being happy. That never happens. <laughs> and, and he sang his little song and did a little little Lego Obi Wan dance, and it was James Arnold Taylor. Like actually being like you know, Clover's everyone just actually like singing it, which was made it even better. And he's like, "Good morning, girls. Good morning, guys." It was like a whole thing. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I liked I liked the uh the character the the one that was like you know trying to pretend uh, to be his wife and stuff. Mm-hmm. She was really cool and very smart. And then Obi Wan kind of ruined it, but like he was having fun, so I I allow it. You know, Obi Wan has had so many plans get ruined. Like, you know, it was his turn to ruin someone else's plan. You That's know, fair. he he earned it for real. Give him a pass for now. <laughs> um, and also, I liked it was there's a little chase scene with Boba Fett in the Slave One, and we get some of the awesome Book of Boba Fett music. Uh, Mm-hmm. That was also really cool. It was super cool. I just I love Boba Fett. I love everybody. Let's be real. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was cute. And then the Vader and Palpatine one was like, but Va- pa- Lego Palpatine is so funny. Yeah, I like thought, actually. I thought it was the funniest because it just reminds me of my mom. So like, <laughs> which <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> explain explain so my mom is also like me not very good at relaxing like we try but like you know it doesn't really work out and then like if we go on vacation like well not we but my mom mostly like if she if we go on vacation she needs like to know what we're doing or like you know she wants to know that it's fun and that she'll actually like it but a good amount of activities she doesn't like in general um But, you know, but then there's Vader, a.k.a. my dad, trying his hardest (laughs) to make her happy and to figure out what she would like and do everything. Um, So I think it was just a representation of uh, my dad and my mom. And uh, it's interesting, though, because sometimes when we do go on vacation, well, not really vacations, we don't get vacations where we're Hispanic, but whenever we like go to events or something, um, it's like it, the, the like most random thing she will enjoy more than like if we plan something that we're like, yes, mom would love this. Like it'll it's it's so random. Um, someone who is very, very good at doing it at like figuring out my mom uh, and what she liked especially like going to Disney was Jono rest in peace Jono but um 
he like would figure like figure out every little thing about my mom and my mom hates Disneyland no she doesn't hate it but like she doesn't like standing in line she doesn't like people you know she doesn't like the sun sometimes but Jonah will be like okay we're gonna go here you like this place because this 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 there's these drinks you'll like these drinks Uh uh-huh you like this food so we're gonna go here but Disney is too expensive so we have some sandwiches and like perfect so yeah my mom is a little bit of a palpatine and then it runs in the family but if we if like if there's a competition and we can be the best at something we will try to do that so yeah but i thought it was really cute because uh vader was like Vader is usually funny in the Lego movies or like the Lego shows or anything because usually like they don't like to make the Lego Star Wars too dark or like dark at all so I think it's always funny seeing like Vader and stuff like just kind of <laughs> just kind of be there that but, was yeah that's really my TED great. talk I love that. That was um, really funny. <laughs> you now, sound like you laughed gonna, so much. No, I'm just because I'm podcasting with your dad tonight. I'm just gonna be like, you're Vader. <laughs> yeah. <See ya>. Um, <laughs> which is even funnier because my mom did not watch the show or the movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. So just yeah, just tell her like, yeah, mom, you kind of remind me of Palpatine. And that'll go over great. I yeah, think. I'm sure it will. You yeah. know, when she People listens love to this, she'll love it. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm not alive <laughs> in like a week, <laughs> uh, you got laser beam from across the country. Yeah. Um, which is part of Palpatine, you know, thing. Yeah. Um, I think it's funny, funnier because, like, uh, like you know we knew scarif before mm-hmm. and and then he was like you know what this place is great let's build an imperial base here i really like that because it was just something like it was just like a really goofy little thing and then it's like you know what we're gonna make this pivotal to the star wars lore yeah like I- <laughs> The, it reminds me of, I don't there's a word like for it, rogue one like everything that leads up to a new hope like we're gonna <laughs> pinpoint it with this like I think it's fantastic yeah I don't I there's a word for it but there's a um it's kind of like in like Greek like uh myths and stuff where like they're like yeah the reason why there's stars in the sky is because of this event. Oh, like a like a fable yes yes i think there's another word but yes um and uh i think it's i think things like that are really really funny especially for like star wars yeah well and i think like it's like because with star wars like at this point almost every like little thing has or will have a whole backstory you know like Mm -hmm. they've expanded it so much and explained so many different things and a lot of it's very like you know like Rogue One is backstory for like just in A New Hope and they're like oh yeah we have Death Star plans and it's like we got a whole movie out of that and it's a very heavy movie and now we're getting a whole series behind that and we got a bunch of books behind you know like everything and then it's like how can we explain Scare? <laughs> oh <laughs> Vader and Palpatine went on vacation and Palpatine had a great time <laughs> And there was a little, you know, summer games competition that they won using the force. And also Weird Al was there. Uh, And it's just like, yeah, it was perfect. Down to the Mm -hmm. last, whatever. I don't know. I didn't watch the last Lego piece. Yes. I also liked how um, every time that we got to a different ghost, like people were like Obi Wan said to relax. Yeah, oh, right. yeah, yeah. Because Obi Wan, <laughs> Obi Wan appears to Finn first, and he's like, "Oh, you should enjoy your vacation, relax," and tells his little story about how he learned to relax. And then 
Anakin. Uh, by the way, I loved Anakin's Force Ghost entrance mm-hmm. when he comes out of the water and he's wearing like scuba gear. So you get the like Darth Vader breathing. He's like, "What's up? It's Anakin. It's Matt Lanter, you know." <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and then you know, and he told. It's very funny that Anakin's like just casually like, "Yeah, one time Vader and or as Vader like." I just did this and like you know like yeah I was also like murdering people at the time you know but like I did go on vacation <laughs> like yeah very con- very funny concept and uh, yeah the wait even Leia was like everyone said to relax yeah <laughs> okay so it, was, it was so good yeah um I, Leia's story I like too it was like she it was like right before Ben goes off to Jedi school and she and Han are like, oh, we're going to take a little vacation. And they go to this resort on Endor. Um, but it's like a not great resort. And Ben raises a falcon and blah, blah, blah. Um, which was, it was cute. But I think I probably preferred the first two, but it was also cute. Mm-hmm. Um then uh for leia's it was um her han and baby ben go to well he's not he has a little really short baby, lego but he's he has like a little short baby. lego leg so you know he's he does <laughs> you know, he's it was just, it was the ones like, that don't move yeah they just kind of you just kind of <laughs> stand there. um but um yeah, little baby Ben. That was weird and kind of sad to see. Um, because they were just they're all together and happy. Well, kind of happy. They were happy for the most part, but Ben was kind of a jerk. But like, little teenagers be like that, I guess. Uh, so I'm told. <laughs> um, and uh. I thought it was cool to see the relationship of Han and Kylo or Ben Ben because like you know the whole history afterwards <laughs> is kind of sad. Um it's nice to see them just being like a relatively normal family. Yeah. Um and then uh he's never like flown the ship before. Uh, which is yeah. <laughs> hashtag relatable. <laughs> um, but I, he did he crash into a few trees? I feel like he did. He crashed a little bit. He didn't like crash, crash, you know? Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Not too relatable then. <laughs> um, he bumped into some like things, mm-hmm. but not it, like he hit some things. But it wasn't he like crashed the ship. Like it was like, oh yeah, he hit a tree, but it's a giant spaceship. So it's like, doesn't mm-hmm. matter as much as like a car or something. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, then there was like, there was supposed to be technically like a resort there, but they, um, the Ewoks are missing. And I don't remember the guy's name. But uh, he was supposed to be running the, like, resort. But the Ewoks don't like him, so they try to eat him. Uh, I'm all for Ewoks eating people that deserve it. I think it's great. Uh, And uh, it's the circle of life. (laughs) Um, You know, (laughs) they're natural predators. Ewoks are really apex predators. Yeah. Honestly, they rule that jungle or forest. Yes. Um, and the, how do you draw the line between a forest and a jungle? Uh, a jungle to me is wet, but it's not a rainforest. So it's less wet than a rainforest and more, more the overgrown than a forest. Where's the line, though? Well, so if a forest is, hmm. 
I don't go to enough forests, and you won't either, any... since there's a. Uh, hey, <laughs> there's I hiked nothing up there. A mountain. Yeah, that's all you got um, is desert mountains there. There, yeah, there weren't really trees. Um, yeah, it's a different. It's a very different place, you know. Because sometimes I'm like really homesick, and I'm like, I'm gonna get boba, it makes me feel better. And then I walk outside, and it's like the whole place is a reminder. Of I'm very far away. Interesting. Yeah. I have a friend who's an ecology major. I'm going to ask him what the differences are between forests, rainforests, and jungles. Hmm. Are they very far on that? Or, hmm? like, are they freshmen and they might not oh, even no, know he's the a answer? Senior. He's a senior. Okay. I'm, I'm not really friends with freshmen. I don't know any. <laughs> college freshman I don't think or no my sister's second year so no I don't know any college freshman I don't think mm. maybe I, 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 um, I work in the kitchen and it's a kitchen that like that that's that was my class last semester <laughs> and so like there's technically there's the uh, like students there that are like they're not younger than me or anything because it's a college and in that culinary school like could be 80 and be going to that school um but they like they're a, a semester below me and I and I'm in like I guess I technically have authority but not really like I don't like my job isn't to boss them around it's just to like help and like you know cut things and prep and all that but they, a lot of the guys there see me as a threat sometimes. Cause like. You are a threat. I, you hit him. Hit him in the face. I, yeah. I mean. Whack him. It, it, but it's like, it's just, it's weird. Uh, Cause they'll be like, yeah. Have you even, have you worked in a kitchen before? I'm like, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> They're like, yeah, well, what kind of kitchen? I'm like, Disney, uh, California kitchens. They're like, yeah, well, I, my, my restaurant did like a hundred covers per night. I'm like, uh, all right, Disney, I did 600. Right. <laughs> I don't know what you want me to say. Like, I don't want to make you feel bad, but like, I think. I mean, you know what? If someone one tries one to make you feel up. bad first, then you can make them feel bad. That's fair. That's but the it rules. Was, you yeah, know, it's right. like with uh-huh. Star Wars, if someone's like, you know, I'm never going to be like, oh, well, I read these books and I know more than you. But if they try to act like they know more than me, then it's time to beat them up yes. mentally. You're physically, right. that probably wouldn't go well for me. Yeah, um, physically, it might go well for me, but like maybe like not uh, legally well. Oh, gosh, my ecology major friend sent me a graph. A graph um, of forest and it's not- a climate graph for Manaus, Manaus, Brazil. Uh, it has the temperature and the in Celsius and the rainfall in millimeters. Um, I didn't. I don't know so what else. now you ask them, what is Endor? <laughs> well, I think Endor would be a forest, right? Yeah, but what, where'd the question come from? Um, you know, I called Endor a jungle, and I said, no, it's a forest. And then I was like, what's the difference? And now I, then I just kind of spiraled from there. Do you think there are jungles on Endor? Oh, he sent me another graph. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you could respond to a question like that with a graph. He sent me, um, okay. So this is temperate rainforest on it. Um, oh gosh, I have the numbers. Okay, so the rainforest graph has more precipitation than the, is this the jungle? Is Brazil a jun- the jungle one? I'll let him send a few more graphs and see. Um. <laughs> this is why we are film major and culinary. <laughs> yes. I don't have to do graphs. Yeah. I, um, I love this. I have to do accounting. 
huh? I will have to do that too, actually. Yeah, I don't like. How's your um, job going? Swell. I don't. I had to sign like an NDA for it. I don't know what I. Oh. Did, like, okay. Well. <laughs> awesome. Good. <laughs> it's great, though. I love it. Um. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Lego Star Wars Summer Vacation. Um. Yeah. Moving there's on. the Ben thing. So there's there's like three stories Finn gets told. You know. Oh, and they're on the house. Yeah. I don't think we said that. You know, yes so they're they're like actually there. chilling good advertising chilling there. chilling um for sure uh and lando owns the halcyon i guess i don't know i didn't do the star cruiser um the star I cruiser I do, lore I, yeah i don't know i hope i get to go on the star cruiser someday um but so i don't know it's too much about it um he sent me a third <laughs> from vermont yeah, okay I don't, I don't know how the graphs are uh okay so it looks like he sent me a graph about jungles a graph about rainforest and a graph about i guess this is a forest in vermont i would probably be a forest not a jungle so i guess there's more precipitation in the rainforest mm-hmm. and more higher temperatures in the jungle maybe i don't know he's he's like a published like he's like has published lab work and stuff about ecology um so it's a bit beyond my understanding but i think that's what it is i'm gonna say it's that from the graphs (laughs) um okay uh yeah so finn and it's like finn ray rose poe bb8 did three PO go with them? I think he did. He's maybe in everything, so maybe. Three PO, yeah, he's everywhere. I know BB-8 but it's great. was. BB-8 definitely was. Dio, I'm pretty sure was with them. Mm. Um, I just read Shadow of the Sith, by the way. There's an art review of it on starwayskeeper.com. Um, OG is so mean to poor little Dio. He just oh, tries yeah. to help and he like kicks him or like throws him. It's so terrible. Yeah, I mean, that's why Dio has trauma. I know. I just, he's so, I, he's so mean. Um, yeah, but it's like the whole like little sequel gang on this vacation before they go out like. I forget what they were all going to do after they said it in their group head. Like, Ray is going to do, like, Jedi stuff. Poe's going to do, like, general stuff, you know? Like, they all have their little stuff going on. Um, and this is, like, their little vacation they're going on that Finn arranged. Um, and, you know, it's sad. Uh, but then they're all like, let's enjoy our time together and make the most of it and be happy for each other. Blah, blah. And it's really cute. And Finn's like the best friend ever. I really want Finn to be my friend. Mm, yes. <laughs> yeah, it was it was cute. Very sad. But like, you know, sometimes it happens. Sometimes you gotta gotta got gotta get got. You know? Yeah. Um, okay. Yes. Uh, so yeah, summer vacation, Lego Star Wars special is really cute. Um, I now now that they have one for each of the main like trio, I don't know. I'm sure we'll get other Lego specials, but I don't know how many more sequel ones we will get. I hope so because I feel like that's the only like sequel trilogy content we get anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, like since Resistance ended, and obviously since Nine came out. I was just sad because I really adore those characters. I don't want to see them do more things. Uh, hopefully, you know, I mean, we could get a Rose special. Rose could have a, like, spring break. Woo. Winter break. Oh, well, there's already a winter one with the holiday special. So, like, if fall break. Well, because, see, because Poe did Halloween. 
Hmm. That's fall, but that's like specific. Yeah, but I feel like we haven't had a spring one. So like spring break. Ooh. Birthday oh, special. Spring birthday. They could do birthday, actually. They don't really do birthdays in Star Wars. They have like Ezra's. That's then, enough. That's one. <laughs> who really do we even care about anyone's birthday except for Ezra's? Let's be totally honest. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, there's really never been anyone else's birthday. I think in that one Clone Wars episode, I think it's called Evil Plans when Padme's arranging like a party and she has to get that big cake and like see if and Archie go at Yogan's and captured by Cad Bane and stuff. Was that a birthday party for like the senator or was that like a random party? Mm. I think it was a birthday party. That's two. Random senator and his friend. Mm-hmm. What other birthdays do we need? You're right, you're right. Don't need any more. <laughs> um, so yeah. Do you do Valentine's Day? They haven't done Valentine's Day? No. Hmm. Rose Valentine. They can validate all the Rose comics. I think Afra should do Valentine's Day. Yeah, yeah Afra's not a sequel trilogy. She could be. She could be old lady. Or you have yeah. Carbonite. Yeah, like uh, Kicks. I want to see Kicks again. God, I know. I also want to see Kicks. Well, there's so many things we could get. We probably will get eventually. It's exciting. It's a good time to be a Star Wars. Um, so yeah, that was the Lego Summer Special. Would recommend if you're like me and in a particular stage of your life, it might hurt you a lot. <laughs> hmm. But that's okay. Just means the themes were resonating. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes. Anyway, Rogue One was back in theaters a couple weeks ago. Yes, and I went to watch it at El Capitan. I saw it five times. Because that's a lot I, of time. I know, but okay. I got AMC A list when I moved here because there's an AMC like right near my apartment. And um, so it's, so AMC, I'm going to, this is not an ad. I'm not sponsored, but I'm saying this is like 24 something dollars, but you get to see three movies a week included in that. One IMAX row one ticket was like $24. And I saw it three times in a week for my subscription. It was great. At the best time. I saw it at the L Cap twice. Once, because I thought the Mandos were going on Friday and I got there and they were going Sunday. Uh, but I, I was already there. So I just went to see it anyway. And then I went again with the Mandos on Sunday. Um, yeah. I only went once. <laughs> I went five times. I cried every time. Um, cried a little bit less each time. I think the first time was rough. Um, but yeah, it was amazing. I loved getting to see it in theaters again. I want to see so many <laughs> movies. I want to see all the Star Wars movies in theaters again. I think that should be a thing that happens. Mm-hmm. Um, I also then, the other night, I saw DC League of Super Pets. And I was watching it, and the squirrel, every time the squirrel talked, I was like, I swear that's Diego Luna. I just saw Rogue One <laughs> five times. I like I know his voice very well right now. I swear that's Diego Luna. And it was Diego Luna. So <laughs> there's a movie called Book of Life that I really like. 
and it's Diego Luna. And he just, he's beautiful, beautiful man. <laughs> like he already had an accent in like the Star Wars movies, but like it's like even more like elevated in Book of Life. And then um, he's also in Maya and the Three, which is also a really good show. Well, Book of Life is not a Did show. Did I watch but it's, Book of Life with you? I think. I think so. I think you showed me Book of Life. It's very good. I probably would have. <laughs> the lady with the candles on her hat. Yes. Yeah. The muerte. Um, yes. yes. Very good. And then um, in Maya and the Three, he's Prince Zatz. The Prince of Bats. Um, Prince and of what? Prince of Bats. Because it's like... And his it takes, name is Zats? Yeah. And he's the Prince of Bats. Yes. Sick. He, <laughs> yeah, he's kind of emo. <laughs> um, <laughs> emo Diego Luna? Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Uh, yeah, it's like... Um, basically, the characters in Book of Life, the, the one that he plays, Manolo, and um maria she's like the, the, the like the main characters main lovers and blah 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 so maya and the three is kind of like a prequel to book of life but it's like aztec era so it's like prequel prequel freaking pre prequel <laughs> pre pre prequel um but it, it's like aztec uh era and so the main character, Maya, is voiced by the woman that the actress that does Maria in Book of Life. And then Zatz is like, you know, the main like lover. Like they're both, they end up together and blah, 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 blah. Well, kind of. I'm not going to spoil it, but yeah. Actually, I, oh, I know if my dad listens to that, they're not going to finish watching it. Are you going to watch it? I mean, I don't know, maybe. Okay, I won't say anything. But it relates to Rogue One. Listening. It's the Rogue One of it's it's it relates a lot like Rogue One. Oh That's gee, I wonder what say. that means. Yeah. Really? But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna spoil it, but okay. it relates. <laughs> but anyway. Uh huh. <laughs> but you'll you'll see. <laughs> um, but anyway, so like, um, uh, Maya is that voice actress, and then Zatz is, uh, Diego Luna. And I think it's so funny because he's like, super emo, and like, well, he's not too emo, but he's pretty emo because it's like the Prince of Bats, but it's like all the Aztec gods and and goddesses, and it's really cool because like, you know, even like, in middle school or high school, you, everyone freaks out about like you know greek gods maybe like norse gods but like aztec gods are really really cool <laughs> um but anyway yeah uh and so they're they're cool yeah uh, diego luna is cool i think he's super funny because he also does the very <laughs> elevated accent there um and the character is cool and the show is good and I was trying to get my parents to watch it there but they kept wanting to watch like what was it murder only murders in the building or something I don't remember what it was called it wasn't very good but that's okay that's all cool and all for Diego Luna but in this movie he was a anxious squirrel that could shoot lightning out of his hands so like interesting interesting you know what was this again it was DC League of Super Pets. It was the Justice League, but like pets. Is it like the <laughs> Pets movie or no? No, no relation. No. Oh, the Secret Life of Pets? No, no. It's literally like like Superman's dog is like the lead. Okay. And then. Is it animated? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just say, I've never heard of it. It just, it came out like over the summer. Um, and I was like, I want to see a movie. What's playing tonight? League of Super Pets? Sure. <laughs> it was actually it was actually a good time and it was really funny. Um, That's good. We had like a crazy stacked cast. Like John Krasinski was Superman. Jamila Jamil was Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. Like obviously a Diego Luna as 
um, the squirrel. Uh, the crypto was, um, no, who was crypto? I don't know. Oh, Batman's dog, or not Batman, spoiler, Batman's dog. <laughs> they marked it as Batman's dog. Um, mm-hmm. Was um, Kevin Hart. It was like, it was one of those um, animated movies where you look at the cast list and it's like, bro, how did you afford all these people? So yeah, it was The Rock. The Rock was crypto. Keanu Reeves Rock was Batman. Everything. Um, Keanu Reeves is also in everything. Maybe not everything, Luna. everything but a Olivia bit about. Wilde. I know Olivia Wilde was last name. No, it was crazy. Keith David was Dog L. That's funny. I love him. <laughs> David Diggs. Alfred Molina. Yeah, crazy stack cast. It's so funny. Um, yeah, it was actually like really funny movie. I'm not gonna lie, it was great. I had a great time. <laughs> I stayed. I was the only person that stayed for the second after credit scene. <laughs> there was like, and I was for a while. I thought I was gonna be the only person in the theater, and like two other people showed up. Um, yeah. I know that um, when if we you want to see some Diego world. Luna before Andor, watch DC League of Super Pets or He's Book of Life or, or Maya and the Life. Three. Maya and the Three uh, is on Netflix and Book of Life is on Disney Plus. I'm going to add it to my letterbox list, Maya and the Three. It's very good. I think you would like it. Um, it's like I'll warn you, my letterbox watch list currently has like Oh, it doesn't say the number. I'm going to guess it's a lot. Um, here it is. Watch list. 539. Hmm. Now 540. What was it? Something in the three? Maya and the three. Maya and the three. Oh, it's like very, it's pretty like kitty, but like it's very good. I just watched TC League of Super Pets. You also watched, uh, what was it? Miraculous. <laughs> Yeah, and that shows slats. So and <laughs> Voltron. Okay, we don't talk about Voltron. <laughs> Not <Listen>. anymore. <laughs> no, that was anyone who knows knows. We don't. I know was, some. No, no, we don't talk about that show. Oh no, I I'm just saying we don't it that was show. also a show. We don't talk about it though. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What <laughs> what else did you watch? Um, so the Rogue uh-huh. One, when it was in theaters, we saw a preview of Andor in front of it. I saw this preview five times. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Cool. It was mostly. I hate how he says Cassian. He's a, uh, what's the guy's name? The guy from Mamma Mia. Oh, uh, <laughs> Lance, Lancer. Lance. I don't know the guy's name, but it's Skarsgård, right? I don't know yeah, it sounds it starts with an L, his Star Wars name. But like, oh my god, he was like Cassie Nander. I'm like, Stop! He was Ander. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Ander, yeah. So now um, he's just Mama Mia guy. Mama. Say Andor, right? Maybe you'll get a name, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cassie Nander. <laughs> And yeah, well, so they show so first they show us a little. It was like the director of the show, I don't remember his name, and Diego Luna sitting there and they're talking about it. And it's a lot of stuff that we heard at the like celebration panel, like, oh, it takes place five years before A New Hope. So, same time Rebel starts. Um, and uh, it's about like you know Cassian because obviously in Rogue One, he's extremely devoted to the cause to the point he'll do anything for it. It's like how do we get there, um, mm-hmm. which I'm excited for. And Diego Lynn talks about the importance of exploring characters and stuff, and it's super great. Um, and then we see a scene between um, Skarsgård's character and Cassian, and it's like Cassian stole like a box. I assume the box is important. Um, it looks important, um, but it, it, I don't. They don't really say what it does. They say it's called like the box. 
And the guy is like, oh, you know, I got your money, but I'll give you another thousand if you tell me how you got it. And Cassian's like, you don't got a thousand. And the guy's like, nah, I do. Cassian's like, okay, I just like walk in, you know. <laughs> but I really liked his, the way he said it in his line. Um, he says like, you know, they're so like proud of themselves. Like they can't even imagine that someone, someone like me would get into their house. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, like all he needs is just like, you know, walk in like you belong. And I thought it was really cool, especially because that's what they did in Rogue One, you know? Um, and it worked. I mean, well, yeah, it worked. <laughs> that part it, worked. Yeah. They got in. They, well, they did it. Out. They did get in. He didn't say anything about getting out. They did get in. So it did work. Yeah, well, huh? everything just went downhill when things started blowing up. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, they did choose to blow stuff up. That's when you know when you watch the same movie five times in a week, you start to wonder. I'm like, what if? Wonder how would it have gone if they didn't go with the blowing things up as a distraction route and just went full infiltration? You know, mm -hmm. how would things have gone differently? Um, but then it wouldn't be an awesome, awesome movie. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh, and then so it's a little, it's a cool scene, and then guys like Cassie and Ander. Uh, I know all about you and how your father was strung up in the square, and it's like a whole thing. And Cassian's like, "Who are you? How do you know this?" And he like puts this gun like right on his face, and his blaster is really cool too. The little mm -hmm. it does like the flippy thing when he I don't know if he's like that like reloading or like <laughs> I don't know it's cool though I really want one to just uh, just like does a little you know what I'm talking about yes you know like he he when he primes it or whatever and it's like the middle part like flips mm -hmm. it's cool yes um she make so one we, for the for like, the LA heat I really, <laughs> I really want that might be my custom Mando blaster. We'll see. Um, just because I think it's super cool. But anyway, so it, we get this scene where they're having this little like confrontation, and Cassian presses the blaster like literally right on his face. Like it's touching. It's not a like yeah. like most time they just point at you. Like it is, it is on his face. Um, it's scary. <laughs> And, but you know, Skarsgård has taken it. He's like, yeah, this is fine. Yeah, it's Tuesday. Um, and I also think probably because he thinks he can convince him too. Yeah. That, and you know, he's probably had a lot of blasters pointed at him. He'd probably get used to it, I think. Uh, but yeah, so it, then so we have Skarsgård with the blaster on space coming like, don't you want to fight these bastards for real? And it's like, whoa. And then it cuts, and then we cut to. It's still like the same scene. We've just jumped. So I'm very curious to see what they cut out in there, what they didn't want to show us yet. You know? Mm -hmm. Cause it's not like because when we cut to the next scene, it's it's Cassian and Skarsgard working together to get out of the warehouse and like shooting the chains and like all these big things are dropping in the warehouse on top of the the security people <laughs> that are shooting them. And they try to get the box, but they can't. They escape. So it's like, like we know Cassian agrees, because he in the next scene he's helping. And also we know because Cassian ends up in the rebellion anyway. So I'm yeah. very, I'm just very curious to see what was said or what happened in the middle part there that they didn't want to show us. It's also likely they kind of cut it for time if they didn't want to show. If it's a long scene and they didn't want to show the whole thing, you know, if they want to get to the action. Which that could also be it. It could be nothing particularly significant, but I'm mm -hmm. just curious to see <laughs> see what's up with that when the show comes out. Yeah, I also think they probably just didn't want to give too much away anyway. Yeah. 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 I'm just I'm interested. 
Um, and so then we have that little scene, and then we have a, tra a trailer. Um, I can't remember. It seems a lot like the trailer from like Celebration and stuff. Uh, we see like, like Mullen Mothma, Cassian. We see Cassian as a young Cassian, so we know the. I I'm not sure if it's like the first episode is six year old mm -hmm. Cassian, or if it's gonna be like a book of Boba Fett situation where we switch. My guess is six year old Cassian is the first episode, or at least part of the first episode. Um, but we'll see, I guess. See. Um, we see, um, and Cassian, we see some really cool, a lot of cool action. Mon Mothma in a bunch of different outfits, and I'm very excited to see Mon Mothma explored because I think she is such an iconic character that has so far not been, she's been present in a lot, but not been explored very much, and I'm excited to see that with her. Um, what else is in the trailer? A lot of just quite cool women. We love that. We stand. <laughs> um, so I was going to use some cool women. And I'm excited to see the the contrast between like Mon Mothma's version of fighting for the rebellion, which is on the Senate floor, and the version of the rebellion we see Cassian and other characters fighting, like really in the metaphorically and literally in the trenches, you know. Yeah. Um I think it was also like like obviously I watched well, not obviously, but, like, I watched Rogue One a few times after watching Rebels and stuff, but <laughs> I liked the look that Mon Mothma gives, like, after they're like, oh, yeah, like, Jen is like, just call Saul Guerrero. And she's just like, mm, I know about that. Well, that's the other thing. Saw's in the trailer. You yeah. Can't, can't have Star Wars without Saul Guerrero anymore. Which I'm not complaining about. He's fantastic. Yes. Um, and uh, a lot of people are trying to figure out uh, like his hair and what era <laughs> it we, is in time. The, the timeline of Star Wars is truly tracked through Saw hair. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will say, because he's, I think the first time we see him bald is Rebels. But that's Rebels season three is it three or four three. that he's in three he's the first time he, yeah whenever so he Ezra cut his hair yeah that was I'm trying to because I know he was in four was it was three yeah because oh because Genos was in three yes and Sabine had the white and purple hair in that episode yes I also tracked time through Sabine's hair um so yeah. he's through the hair usually yeah so the first time we see him bald is then so he's going he's only a couple years away he's like two years away from being bald at this point yeah yeah right because he i don't know is he bald in general i do not tra track time through hair i do is he bald in jedi fallen order no Maybe. I'm Googling right now. He is bald in Jedi Fallen Order. Oh, man. Okay. When does Jedi Fallen Order take place? I thought Jedi Fallen Order was before, the, before Rebels, right? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Okay, so he's he's not bald in. Are the, you calculating? He's not bald in Bad Batch. He's not bald in the uh, flashbacks of Rogue One. He's bald, so that's so it's like right after the Empire falls, like Bad Batch time. He's not bald, and he's still not bald at when he rescues Jin. So, so, okay, so Jedi Fallen Order is five years after the Clone Wars. 
So we use ball. So then when was Jen rescued? Uh um I don't know years, especially Star Wars years. Well, okay, so Jedi Fallen Order is 14 BBY. Rogue One. Rogue One prequel. Rogue One pro- prologue is 13 BBY. So he rescues Jin. He rescues Jin a year before. Okay, so he has hair until, so he rescues Jin. He goes bald in Jedi Fallen Order. And then he grows it back by the time we see him again in Andor. And then he loses it again by the time we see him in Rebels. And then grows it back again for Rogue One, for the main part of Rogue One. Wait, I need a, I need a pen. So, Bad Batch. So 19 BBY. That's Bad Batch. He's in, and he has hair. And the next time we see him is the Rogue One prologue, which is 13 BY. So that's, oh wait, no. Next time we see him, the Jedi Fallen Order. I'm going to figure this out. The Saul Guerrero hair timeline. I'm going to figure it out on this podcast right now. So next time we see him is... <laughs> um, 14. Okay, wait. So Jedi Fallen Order is 14 BBY. So that is before. Okay. So Jedi Fallen Order is 14 BBY. And he still has hair. No, he's bald. He's bald. 13 BBY. He rescues Jin. And he has hair. And then the next time we see after that, I mean, we see, he's in a few books, but I don't know if he has hair or not in his books. I can't remember if, he has, if they say he has hair or not in Rebel Rising. So the next time we see him on screen is going to be this Andor, which is 5 BBY. And Andor, he has hair. And then Rebels, when we see Rebels in season three, so that's like three BBY, about, we'll estimate. Um, or is it two? It's like three or two, close enough. So Rebels, bald, and then around one or zero BBY, like right before New Hope, and he's Rogue One, and he has hair again. So he, this man has gone bald twice. Once, 14 years before New Hope, and then once again, three years before New Hope, but he grows his hair back again before New Hope. And he grows his hair back again after Jedi Fall Order to have hair in Rogue One. I figured it out. I think. Um, okay, yeah, so his hair in the Clone Wars and Bad Batch. No hair, then in Jedi Fall Order, the Rogue One prologue. 
Oh, wait, no. Wait, he doesn't have, does he have hair? How are you doing? Um, he does. Wait, is he bald when he rescues Jin? I uh, think so, right? Let me check. I just saw this movie five times <laughs> in the theaters, like a week ago. Because he definitely has hair when he sees her again. So I think he is bald. When he, I can't find a picture. Yeah, yeah, because he's is. bald when she like calls him on the little screen. Yes, when Lear does. Okay, okay, and then okay. So in Rebels, so I, the pictures reminded me, season three of Rebels, bald, but I think he has hair in season four of Rebels. This is um absolutely riveting podcast content. <laughs> Yeah, there he is with hair in Rebels. So in season three, he's bald. In season four, or wait, is it the other side? No. Well, okay, wait. There he is. No, yeah, okay. So he's bald in season three Rebels. Then he has hair again in season four. Okay, so he went bald twice. Once in Jedi Phone Order, and then once in Jedi Phone Order and the Rogue One prologue. Uh, which are like a year apart from each other so that's consistent and then he grows his hair back again in the roughly eight year period between the rogue one prologue and andor goes bald again two years after andor to be bald in rebels then grows his hair back within a year to have hair in rebels and then he has hair again in rogue in rogue one So the conclusion is? He went bald twice. He was bald on two separate occasions. Gotcha. Saw Greer hair timeline. We got him, boys. Solved. <laughs> we um, got him. We did it. Well, you did it. <laughs> I didn't do anything. <laughs> so now we get to his eye color. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's a whole separate thing on its own. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, do they ever say why? Or are they just like, no? I think it's just like, they didn't force Whitaker to want to wear contacts. And they're like, well, you're not going to force Forrest Whitaker to do something he doesn't want to do. It's Forrest Whitaker. I guess. Yeah. You know what I do love, though? His color, his eye color is different between the Clone Wars and Rebels. In Rebels, it's like a very light green, where in Clone Wars, it's like a very blue turquoise. Yeah, I think his eye color just be changing sometimes. I think, you know, I think how we discussed the possibility that he's not human. What? You know, I mean, like, because like Quinlan Voss is technically not human. So he's like basically human, but he's got like an eye color change thing going on. I need to see another Onderanian <laughs> with different ch color changing eyes first. It's just a quirk of Onderan. Yes. Also, I thought it was funny. Well, not funny, but uh, so, so he like has the Onderan like flag like on him. Mm -hmm. And my dad, for going to the, muse uh, the museum, the uh, El Capitan, he like 
he wore the shirt that he made and it has the under on flag on it oh that's so cool. cute i love it yes i just wore shorts and a tank top because it's la so hot <laughs> oh my gosh it's so hot even when there's you're in like a very air-conditioned place it's still like it's nice and breezy over here but it do be raining every day I went right. <laughs> I do have to head out so I can okay. get to my All right. get to my crops. You have to go to your crops. Go. That's my okay. Moon, we talked a lot falls. about the Andor. The moon falls. The moon rises. <laughs> but we yeah, we talk a lot about Andor. We didn't talk about the Light and Magic documentary. I don't know if you saw that. I just put that on there. I don't know mm-hmm. if you watched that or not. The Light and Magic documentary. Did you watch that? Uh, I watched like half of it. <laughs> okay. Well, I liked it. It was really good. We can talk about it later, but I think we'll have a ton of news from D23 next week because that's mm-hmm. happening right now. I'm finally in Anaheim. I'm not going to D23. I'm a little, a little sad about it. It's fine, though. Wait, where is it? It's in Anaheim. Oh, well, just, I'm so close. just get someone. There's no tickets. Oh, well, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so sad that's that's a problem of itself yeah yeah okay so we'll do plugs super fast so you can get to your crops um so star wars geek girl plugs facebook page is star wars geek girl twitter and instagram at swgeekgirl star wars geek girl.com we have a monthly poll i'm finally okay i said i was finally back last week to doing the book reviews on mondays quizzes on wednesdays and blog articles on fridays and then i was three days late on the second book review and uh today is friday and i still need to finish writing the blog article but you know we're working on it um, shame. i'm i'm trying i'm trying <laughs> send me your sagrera notes i need them okay they're not really that exciting but sure <laughs> all right do you want to do the rogue rebels flags quick yes so see how that so for the rogue rebels we've got the rogue rebels.com where you can find all these cool things that my dad posts and uh sometimes when there's like a new podcast episode he posts the news on there too instagram and tiktok is at the rogue rebels twitch at rogue rebels podcast wherever you're listening to star wars geek girl facebook page the rogue rebels and twitter at rogue rebels fam so if you're ever just trying to find us no matter what on any account just rogue rebels <laughs> whether it's not the rouge rebels. sometimes not yeah, not the Rouge Rebels. Don't spell rogue wrong. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone, so much for listening. Hopefully, we can get back into podcasting a little bit more consistently. Um, we'll try. I'm trying. Yes. I'm trying so hard. I, I'm <laughs> also trying. It just doesn't seem like it because it's I like, just have so much stuff. It's the thing is we're both busy, and then when we're not busy, it's like it just doesn't align, especially in now the time zones again. Um, I will say, now that I've been on this side, it's a lot more annoying to be on this side of the time zone difference than that, the other one. Yeah, I've like, I I'm say. even trying to like set up podcasting time with my dad. But then my dad's like, all right, I got out of work at eight. I'm like, well, it's 11 <laughs> Right, here. no, literally. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, all right. It was right, good well, podcasting again. Good podcasting. Thank you, everyone, so much for listening. Uh, I was Zoe. I was Lizzie. Thank you for listening to Star Wars Geek Girl. May the Force be with you, and goodbye. Goodbye. Star Wars Geek Girls. They're geek girls that like Star Wars. And sometimes cry.